week on Connecticut Power and Politics. State lawmakers scramble to push late bills across the finish line. We'll have the latest. Plus, higher education in our state gets a financial shot in the arm. And workers across the state celebrate a new guarantee. This is Connecticut Power and Politics. And welcome and hello to Connecticut Power and Politics. I'm Mark Sudolf. Governor Lamont is already promising a veto just hours after lawmakers wrapped up for the year. News 12 Connecticut's John Craven has the latest. Democrats took a victory lap as the 2024 General Assembly session wrapped up. Who got the power? We got the power. At the last minute, they pushed through a controversial bill extending assistance to striking workers. Well, no one undertakes a strike uh, lightly. Uh, it is always a financial struggle for families. But just hours later, Governor Lamont crashed the party. He plans to veto the measure. And I want to make sure that we have a strong labor and able to negotiate at the table. Does that mean I want the taxpayers, uh, you know, subsidizing striking workers? Um, I don't think I do. One bill Lamont does support, extending sick days to nearly all Connecticut workers. Lawmakers also approved new election security measures following the ballot stuffing scandal in Bridgeport. They also passed protections for health care workers after a visiting nurse was murdered in Willimantic plus shorter wait times for wheelchair repairs. 90% of consumers are waiting a month for an in-home assessment. But many proposals ran out of time. After Republicans filibustered one bill for two and a half hours and another for four and a half hours. Bills that died include sweeping new rules on artificial intelligence, a ban on no-cause evictions, and Lamont's bill making it a crime to falsify police records. Lawmakers also sent $160 million in federal relief money to UConn and Connecticut State Colleges and Universities. It's an enormous boost. But CSEU's chancellor says it's not enough to avoid a 5% tuition increase. The money is enough so that we don't have to make more painful cuts. And remember, that federal relief money runs out this year. By the way, Governor Lamont has already signed seven bills into law. John Craven, News 12, Connecticut. And State Senate Minority Leader Stephen Harding joins us now to talk about this crazy week. Welcome. Good morning, it's great to be on with you. Well, you know, there's a lot to digest here. Let's begin with a couple of key things that came out of Bridgeport that passed. First, election reforms relating to that ballot box scandal. It really, it really wasn't election reforms. I supported the measure, um, but frankly, they could have done so much more. Senator Robert Sampson put out a bunch of amendments, uh, five to be exact, that actually would have done something about voter integrity, in my opinion, uh, would have actually uh, put safeguards in place uh, that would have given voters confidence that the election system, particularly as it surrounds absentee ballots, um, actually did something to restore, you know, some safeguards. So um, those measures were rejected summarily uh, on a party line by Democrats. So we did, we took some measures to address what happened in Bridgeport, but it's not even close enough to what needs to be done, in my opinion. Another bill that passed, cracking down on illegally passing school buses. Yeah, I mean, that, that was one of the measures that came out of the, the building that I did support. Many of my Republican colleagues supported as well. Uh, public safety is an issue we hear about uh, oftentimes back home, uh, time and time again. Uh, we could have done more in public safety, in, in, in my opinion, as it relates to uh, giving police officers some more authority to be able to protect uh, us and protect themselves uh, and, and be able to do something about the juvenile crime spree we've seen. Uh, however, um, that measure uh, regarding the school buses, uh, I was happy to see move forward. Now, what other bills are you proud of and we're happy to get through this session? Well, the wheelchair wait times is one bill that I know Senator Seminara worked very hard on. I was very happy to see the passage of that. Uh, 5001 was, was, was a good measure that, I was, that it was privacy bright, uh, broad bipartisan support for. Um, but really, I, I also look at session in terms of fighting back some, some bills that did not pass. Uh, giving the deep commissioner more authority uh, to implement measures that would uh, place fees and taxes upon your energy costs. 
uh, things like that were debated and, and, and threatened to be run right up until the end that did not pass. I think it's one of the positive things that came out of session is some bills that didn't pass. Yeah, let's talk a little bit more about that. I know you've been pushing for some, uh, some energy um, changes there as well, and also yep. on the health care. Absolutely. And that was one of the measures that we did not see is it, some, some uh, common sense measures, in my opinion, uh, that would have reduced energy costs. Uh, capping some PPA agreements for wind energy and the like. Senator Fazio worked very hard on those efforts. Unfortunately, that, that, that was rejected by the Democrat majority uh, to reduce uh, energy costs here in the state. Uh, some of the biggest costs for many uh, residents across Connecticut. Uh, other measures that were uh, rejected too were um, affordable uh, associated health care plans. Uh, these are measures that were broadly supported by small businesses that would have allowed uh, small businesses to compete with the bigger business in terms of creating a, a collaborative associated health care plan. Uh, that measure was rejected as well. Uh, would have done a lot, uh, in my opinion, to, to reduce health care costs and make uh, small business employers that much more competitive. Now, you know, of course, as your first time here as the leader of the Republican caucus uh, in Hartford right now, uh, there, there were some bills that Republicans and Democrats just couldn't seem to agree on. Talk about some of those. Yeah, so one was 5004, and that was the, the, the Green Monster Bill, as it was uh, named. Uh, and that was the bill that gave really unfettered authority to the deep commissioner to implement regulations, uh, particularly as it relates to taxes and fees uh, that, that could have cost consumers a lot of money uh, when it comes down to energy costs or paying at the pump for your gas. Uh, that was one measure that you know we did not see eye to eye with the Democrats on. Uh, one measure that was that did pass, the Democrats and Republicans reject, uh, had a disagreement on also was paid sick leave. Uh, we understand uh, it was a noble cause. However, uh, a lot, forcing an employer with simply one employee to provide paid sick leave to every employee uh, is, is going to be uh, insurmountable financially, unfortunately, for some businesses. Uh, we should be in the business here in Connecticut of fostering small business growth, and unfortunately, regulations and mandates like that are curbing it. We're going to talk to Terrence Chang later in the program about uh, the funding that was available now for higher education. Uh, shed some light on that. Well, I mean, there were some good investments that relates to the ARPA fund, uh, and there's no doubt that there were some good investments in the ARPA funding bill. However, there was a lot of financial and budgetary gimmicks that went on with that bill, uh, and that's why many of my Republican colleagues, including myself, rejected the measure. It wasn't because we didn't believe in the investments. It was because they were playing gimmicks. The Democrats were playing gimmicks in terms of that money. They were taking federal ARPA funds, projects that were being funded solely by federal funds, shifting it onto state funds, and not only that, putting it into bonding, therefore putting it into our state credit card. So our taxpayers are now paying that uh, with interest. Um, and so this reallocation of ARPA, uh, although some investments were really positive, uh, the, the budgetary gimmicks that went along with it were completely fiscally irresponsible. And I would argue outside of the strong fiscal guardrails that we put in place uh, back in 2017. Well, obviously the session is over now. We've got a little uh, ways to wait here. Anything else that you're passionate about that uh, you wish could have pushed through? Well, I mean, we mentioned the associated health care plans. I also mentioned uh, some election reforms. Uh, after what happened in Bridgeport and the embarrassment that occurred there, we could have really taken common sense measures to safeguard our elections, particularly as it pertains to the absentee ballot process here in Connecticut. Uh, we actually have some of the loose, loosest laws in the, in the country as it relates to absentee ballot uh, laws and regulations. And uh, we Senator really could have revisited that. Yes, can you hear me? I, I apologize. Uh, I have to wrap it up, but I thank you so much for okay. joining us. Yeah, good to be with you. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much.